So the Quran said, Yadribuhunna, in one of the verses of the Quran, said that when a man has a rebellious wife, that means she's unseemly in her conduct. She come and go, she comes late at night, she does this, she does this, she disrespects, so forth. The, the Prophet Sallallahu said, he said, admonish her. That means talk to her. Give her admonition. Tell her how you displease her conduct. Warn her, tell her don't do that anymore. Then he says after that, separate from her bed. Separate from the bed. He didn't say separate from the house, separate from the bed. That means continue to do all the responsibilities as normal, but when it comes to conjugal relationships, stop. Don't sleep with her. As a matter of fact, sleep in the same room, but don't sleep in the bed. That means no sex. That's hard. That's, that's just as hard for the man as it is for the woman. But the Prophet saw him here saying, if you really want to control her behavior, or if you really want to admonish her, if you're really displeased with the way she's acting, you deny yourself and you also deny her. SubhanAllah. Then he says that if she continues even after that, then the Quran says, Yadribuhunna. It says, apply light corporal punishment with a, with a context to it. It must not swell. It must not cause bleeding. It must not cause any breakage. And it must not cause any damage to her skin. So what can you do? What kind of beating is that? <laughs> Secondly, it must not be on any one of her parts of her body. Okay, which are the sensitive parts of her body? So what kind of, where is that could be? In the, in, the, in the bottom of her feet? <laughs> the third thing, the Prophet wasallam said that if even doing that, hitting her on the leg or tapping her on the shoulders or if, you, if that would cause a, a worse reaction, don't do that. Look, subhanAllah, the wisdom. Now let's put it in context. In the Arab society in which this Quran came to the Arabs first, did it? Where did it come first? It came to the Arabs first. So in their society, it was considered something of urf. How many Arabs here know the word urf? Urf, common usage, huh? Custom. So among the Arabs, this issue, yathrubuhunna, it was consistent with the urf of the Arabs of that day. It was not outside of the context. It was not out abnormal. So when Allah said, Yadribuhunna, to them, it was something to modify. Because the Arabs in that day, maybe they just take something like this and beat the wife with it. <laughs> or maybe in that day, the man, he has something like this here to beat the wife with. <laughs> See, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is modifying their behavior, and he's saying, Yadribuhunna khafifan, very light. And the Prophet is saying that even in doing it like that, if it's more, if you don't think you can correct her behavior, because she's getting even more wilder, more arrogant, more boisterous, even from that, don't even do it. Because today, different reactions could happen. If a man separates from the bed, the woman, she might get crazy. If he, if he touch her, she might get more crazy. She might pull out a gun and shoot him. <laughs> or he, she might wait till he go to sleep and do something that other lady did. So if you could anticipate a reaction like that, that would be worse. You couldn't correct the behavior. The Prophet said, don't do it. And let's look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam throughout his entire life, he never even struck an animal. Is it true? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never struck an animal. One of the people that served him all of his life a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu that served him from the time that he was 11 years old until the Prophet Sallallahu passed away. He said, I served the Prophet Sallallahu throughout his entire life. And he never even said to me, oof. He never even said to me, why you didn't do that? How come you so-and-so? You know, somebody's serving me. And he forgot. I said, what's, what's wrong with you? Didn't I tell you so-and-so? That'd be most of us. The Prophet Sallallahu he never even said to that person, how come you didn't do that? What's wrong with you? That person served him for over 40 years and the Prophet Sallallahu never said that. The third thing, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he never ever laid his hands on his wife except in a way of kindness, in a way of showing mercy, 
or in a way of dignity or decency. And there was never in the life of the Prophet Sam any complaint by any wife. During the time of the Prophet Sam, no companions came. No female companions came and said, Oh, Prophet Sam, your companions who are our husbands, they are beating us and they are this and they are that. No, this wasn't among the Prophet Sam's time. This wasn't done because he did not approve it. So even though the Quran, based upon the urf of the Arabs, even though the Quran said this, the Prophet himself, what did he do? He didn't do it. He wasn't disobedient to God. It was just that the Quran says certain things for us as a last resort that we don't have to do. Allah said in the Quran regarding the, the, the women, plural marriage, he says, Mathna aw thulatha aw ruba. He says two, three, or four. Yes. There's a wisdom behind it. You women wouldn't say there's no wisdom, wisdom behind it, but there's a wisdom behind it. We can discuss this in a different issue, a different setting, but there's a wisdom behind it. But look, did the Prophet Sallallahu say to us, a, a man, he had to take two, three, four? No, he didn't. In fact, God said, he said, one is better for you if you only knew. Did he say that? One is better if you only knew. In another place, he said that even though he said, Metna al-tulat al-raba, he said, you men can never be fair with women. So look at, look what, God is discouraging it. He's telling you, warning you, one is better if you only knew. He's warning you, watch out. You're going to get yourself in trouble. You're going to upset the cart. There's some reaction that's going to come. There's going to be some fitna. One is better if you only knew. But for those who fall within the category and the social, political, psychological conditions are of sort where their women outnumber the men and there are no prospective men to marry those women, then God says two, three, or four. But did you know that in the Muslim world, only one out of 715 men, this is a statistic you brothers need to keep in mind, sisters, only one out of 715 Muslim men are going to take another wife. Doesn't that feel good for the other 714 sisters? <laughs>